When shooting with film, you have the choice of two types of emulsion, reversal and negative. Negative film is probably the one you've heard of. As the name suggests, negative is captured as an inverted image and printed as a positive, so it can be seen as it should be. Reversal film, however, is already captured as a positive image. The main downside to reversal film is that it's harder to expose because the contrast is higher. Negative film has a higher exposure latitude, therefore it's easier to light for. Film stock needs to be in complete darkness from the moment it's made, through to being loaded into the camera and right up until it's been processed. The processing stage can be just as costly as the purchase of the film stock itself, but can also be an opportunity for creativity. Reversal and negative film each have their own special type of chemical solution. When you switch the chemicals in the emulsion, you can get some interesting effects. This is called cross-processing. For example, if you took reversal film and processed it with negative chemicals, you may get a result similar to this. Highly saturated and with a slightly orange base. However, all the results of cross-processing will vary depending on the type of emulsion, chemical solution and how the film is exposed. Now, let's get into the different sizes of film. The width of the film strip is referred to as the film gauge. These are all measured in millimetres, such as 16mm or 35mm. It's important to know that this doesn't refer to the aspect ratio. If we take 16mm and super 16mm for example, they both have the same film gauge but look slightly different as you can see here. Super 16mm only has perfs running down one side. When people realised that this film gauge also worked with one row of perfs rather than two, it became more popular as it made better use of the emulsion, therefore giving room for the frame to be widened. These perforations are needed so that while the camera is rolling, small hooks can insert themselves and drag the film strip down to position the next frame ready for exposing. This all happens with an incredible speed, as the standard for film is 24 frames per second. But some high speed film cameras can reach an incredibly high 360 frames per second. The number of perfs you're shooting refer to how many holes run alongside one frame on the emulsion. So if you were shooting 3 perf, your camera would be set to a 3 perf movement. If you were shooting 4 perf, it would be a 4 perf movement. Film gauges start from 8mm and go all the way to 70mm. However, the most commonly used film gauge out of these is 35. Unlike 16mm, Super 35 and 35 use the exact same stock. The only difference between them is that 35 allows a section of the film for sound information, but Super 35 doesn't. This extra space can then be used to allow for wider aspect ratios. Emulsion is sensitive to light waves. This is how images are captured onto each frame but it's also sensitive to non-visible waveforms, such as X-rays. So, if you have unprocessed film stock, don't put it in your checked luggage at the airport, as the scanners are quite strong and may fog your film. However, if you've already processed your film, the scanners won't be a problem. When deciding the sensitivity for your film stock, the procedure is slightly different from dealing with digital cameras. With digital sensors, you can change the sensitivity by adjusting the ISO, but for emulsion, the sensitivity is predetermined by the stock you choose. This is referred to as the exposure index. Similarly to ISO, the higher the exposure index, the more sensitive to light it is. It's also worth noting that the higher the sensitivity, the more likely you are to accumulate grain on your footage.
but the lower the exposure index, the finer the grain will be. The next thing to decide is what colour temperature to shoot at. Just like the exposure index, this will be predetermined with the stock you choose. You can either have designated T for tungsten or designated D for daylight. If you wanted to have the flexibility of moving from an indoor scene lit with tungsten lights to an outdoor scene lit with daylight, you could use an 85 filter to correct the colour temperature. This filter will balance tungsten stock for a daylight setting. This way you don't have to have two types of film stock and don't lose time loading a new roll of film. You'll want to base both the colour temperature and the exposure index you choose on how you want to light the scene. For example, if you were inside shooting with limited lighting, the recommended stock would be 500T. If you were filming an exterior daytime scene, the recommended stock would be 50D. Of course, these are only what's recommended on paper, but all settings will be different, and it's up to the cinematographer to choose what's right for them. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.